Welcome to the review on our van, the Auto Trail Adventure 65. During this video, we're going to take you through both the outside features and the inside features of the van and what made us buy it. So let's go and take a look, first of all, around the outside. So let's start at the front on the van. One of the things that attracted us to the, this model particularly was the design and the colour and the shape. So on the front you've got the piano black on the grille here which looks really nice and also something else and this, this is standard. It's got LED daytime running lights built into the bottom on the Ducato. They look fantastic, give it real presence when it's on the road and also it helps people see you more when you come in so they get out of your way. That's, the, that's in theory. So the paint itself on this one is Expedition Grey. This is a colour we saw when we first saw the vehicle at a show. We absolutely love this colour. There are, I think, six colours available on this. We'll put that in a link to the video so you can see what other colours are available. But it's, we didn't want white. That was one of the main things in the van. We didn't want white. So Expedition Grey for us was a real winner. You can see nice decals on the front. The Adventure badge here and the, obviously the Auto Trail badge. And also you've got the Auto Trail mark up the top on there as well. Coming around to the side, we'll have, we've got alloy wheels as standard. They're 16 inch alloys, which we'll show you in a second. Uh, and then we'll move around the van so you can see all the decals as well. Because it really is a stylish van. So down the outside of the van, you can see the decals. They're really nice, they're really modern, like a mountain theme. That's something that really attracted us to the van as well when we first saw it. Double glazed windows. At the top, at the back, you can see it's got a full length, huge external awning. That is standard on the van as well. You're really, really cool feature. Moving down the van, you've got electric step as you go into the vehicle, but we'll look at that later. And also you've got the fridge vents. So you can see the fridges on this side, the fridge vents here, and also the water inlet for the onboard water tank as well. You can fill that here. And then finally at the back, you've got 16 inch alloys as standard on the van, which are really cool as well. So the Ducato is fitted with barn doors. So you've got independent rear doors in the back. This is a really, really good feature. This is something again that we wanted because it means we can have the back doors open if we're parked up, hopefully, reversed into a nice beautiful lake or something like that, be able to open the doors and sit out and have a look at the, the scenery. Um, we used it last year in the van, it was a really good feature, uh, especially when we're in like the forest and stuff. You can open the van doors and see like rabbits and birds and all sorts of wildlife at the back of the van too. So moving around to the driver's side, you've got the Trum vent for the heating and the boiler here. Then you've got the door for the cassette toilet, so you can obviously remove that from the outside there. Something else that's really good on the Ducato, it's got side lights built into it, standard on this model. So when you turn your lights on, these light up down the side of the vehicle, giving you great visibility at night. The taps down here at the bottom, you can drain both the water, the fresh water, when you want to winterise it, and also your waste tap on the bottom here too. Further along, electric hookup socket on this side. And then just in front of that, another really good feature, a standard on this, on this model. It's got an LPG tank built into the van, which is a brilliant feature because it means the tank's underneath, it's out of the way. You don't have to worry about buying gas. You can fill it up. There's a dial on the dashboard that tells you how much you've got left. We filled it once with about five pounds worth of gas, as much as we could squeeze in. Um, the tank's almost still full and we used it quite a lot last year. A really good feature. A lot of uh, people are concerned that petrol stations are stopping to sell LPG but there's still plenty of petrol stations, particularly on motorways and stuff. Um, and also a lot of the camping shops and the uh, camping and um, caravan type businesses, they also sell LPG in tanks. So you can come fill up there as well. Then there's also a really good app that you can actually use. We'll put a link to that in the video. And you can see also when you're driving along where you can find an LPG replacement uh, fill up tank. As you can see in the Ducato, this model also has blinds. We've had to close them because the sun's really bright today. It's a lovely day. So it's got cab blinds, which, are, which sit at the front. We've also got them on the sides and both the sides. It's all inbuilt as standard. 
Really good feature as well is you, if you wanted to adjust the, uh, if you wanted to put a rear view mirror on the van, it doesn't come with one of the standard because the, the, this model's based on a, on a panel van with no rear windows. So you can actually fit a rear view mirror. There's a mounting on the windscreen from Fiat, from factory. So you've got a little slot for that as well. Interior light, and then you've got your controls for your steering wheel. On the Adventure, you have audio mounted controls on the steering wheel, which are really handy as well. So that means you can control the radio. You can also answer and uh, reject calls as well from the steering wheel without taking your hands off. And it works with the head unit as well. So you can control the functions and features again on the head unit from the steering wheel, which is really handy. And built in Bluetooth, so obviously you can connect your phone as well. So the Ducato has electric mirrors and it has electric windows in the front, which you can also isolate the door locks from the door, driver's door as well, which is really handy. Another feature on the Ducato is standard, it's got cruise control, really handy if you're on the motorway, particularly if there's roadworks, etc. You can click cruise control on and that'll keep the speed for you. There's also a speed limiter as well, if you're in a different, difficult speed area too. Starting at the bottom of the dashboard, you can see it has a warning switch, you can lock your doors from here, you can turn the heated mirrors on there as well, which is really handy. On this side, you've got ASR, uh, which is stability control on the van as well, which is on this model standard. Um, something that I'd like to see maybe on future models would be the Traction Plus system that Fiat do, which sits there. And that's basically like a clever two wheel drive system that gives you more traction if your wheels start to slip. That with modern snow tires as standard would be a really cool feature for a camper van, uh, but maybe in the future. This model's fitted with the cup holders. You've got cup holders at the bottom here for you, nice big cup holders, and also somewhere to store your mobile phone as well. And moving up to the heating controls, you've got your heating controls on this side, you've got your air conditioning button in the middle, and your fan control and selector for the hot and cold on this side too. Uh, usual standard features on, it, on the vehicle really. So the nav unit on the van is specific for motorhome. Um, it has navigation on there as well. I won't press it because it will go and show exactly where the van's parked. Um, you've got radio, you've got normal FM, AM tuner. You've also got DAB on it too, a standard. You can also connect a Bluetooth device to it, to so your phone, outputs as well uh, from different devices. And also you can also bring in reversing cameras on there as well too. So it brings it up on the display, which is all standard on the vehicle. Um, you can also plug in a mobile phone as well into a cable that's built into the dash. And that will give you, basically if you've got an Android phone, it'll mirror your screen. So you can also see what's on your phone screen onto the dashboard. We found this really useful. It's been a really good um, nav unit on the van. The nav particularly is, um, is good. One thing I'd say is um, we found quite early on, if you need to update the software, it's a manual update process using a computer. So once you've done that, it works a lot better. But a really good system, standard. Something else that Ducato's got a standard. If you prefer to use your own device for your mobile phone or tablet for navigation, it's got a tablet holder built into the dashboard. Very simple to use. You just lift the handle and it pops up and then you release the catch on the side and then you can literally sit your tablet or your phone in there. Really handy. Um, you can also plug, and plug it into the USB port on the dashboard too. And again, very simple to close and put it out of the way. You've got two ports uh, as well with the dash, another cup holder at the top here. There is a removable section I've taken out there because it rattles. You've got USB built into the dash and you've also got a 12 volt socket as well, a normal standard 12 volt socket, both built into the dash. They run off the, the cab power, the Ducato bit when the engine's running. And then storage on the Ducato, you've got loads. You've got two massive door pockets either side. You've got a little shelf on both doors as well. And then you've got this really cool dashboard um, pouch, which was hidden. It took us three months to find this. Literally, it looks like it's part of the dashboard. If you lift it up, it pops up. And in there, you'll also find the cable for the uh, connecting your phone to the, the head unit as well, if you've got an Android phone. Um, that's also chilled in there. So if you've got the air conditioning on, it'll also work as a, as a mini fridge. If you've got cans and stuff, you've not got the fridge on in the back of the van. And then finally, you've got a shelf just below that and you've got your normal glove box, which is a good size down there too. In addition, if we move over here, you've got door pockets, which are absolutely huge. Now we store normally in our door pockets, we store the cable for electric on one side and the other side we store the water, fresh water hose. But I know quite a few people who've got the van, they like to store their water in there. They're absolutely huge, really good additional storage that we didn't see, first of all. Come and look inside. So here we've got the big slidey door. Um, hooks in there so it stays open on its own. Really big space, lets in loads of light and air. So it's really great if you sat this end of the van. Um, gives a great view, I mean, amazing view that we've got here today. Um, one thing that we really, really like as well is this um, fly screen. It comes all the way across um, and it's great. So you can be in here um, 
with all the light and fresh air in and know that uh, the obesities are coming in. It's also great uh, if we've got Molly with us as well because she can sit and look out. Um, I think only once did she try to go through it, but it survived. So um, it's also good as well if you're cooking and it's uh, a bit breezy, so it does stop a little bit of the draft coming in here when Ian's cooking in the kitchen. I'll make him do the kitchen when we're away. Um, so outside we've got uh, some lights here. There's an awning light um, which we switch on from the control panel but you probably can't see that today. Um, also we've got this strip light here um, which we control there which is really bright and great if you're sat out in the evening um, you know a few people around a campfire. Um, really nice there and excellent feature is the electronic step. So come in. So we've closed the fly screen because there was a big bee incident so we'll be keeping that closed for the rest of the filming. So here we are in the front, um, two captain's chairs that swivel around nicely, armrests that can be used up or down, um, loads of storage behind this chair once it's turned around this way, really great uh, once you're parked. Uh, we've got the overhead storage locker here, uh, usually rammed full of coats, blankets, pillows, <laughs> everything that um, we can fit up there and also the ladder for the pop top which we'll come back to. Um, so in the diner area, um, as you can see, it's this lovely grey colour, um, really nice light interior, real nice feel to it. Um, if we turn that one, we've got the table so you can sit round comfortably. One feature I do like as well is the um, carpets. They can be press studded to the floor um, or taken up. So it's really easy to take them out for cleaning. Um, take, take them out, hoover them in, indoors, that's what we do, or just, and then just sweep around the floor. So in the front here, we've got two storage lockers, um, really big spacious lockers. Ooh, we've got toilet roll in this one. Uh, lovely finish to them as well. And then they just unclip there. Um, there's actually a big storage space under this front seat as well. Uh, we put loads of bottles of water, shoes. So really great. Um, all of Molly's stuff goes in there as well. Um, so really great to keep everything out of the way and keep the van nice and tidy. So this van is a four berth, four seat van. Um, we've got two more seat belts here as well as the two obvious ones in the cab. So you can easily transport four passengers. Um, just above here as well, it's got the USB sockets as well. So we'll come back to those in a minute. So the control panel is found here above the door. You've got your auto trail control panel and then your Truma one for heating hot water. So in the kitchen, um, starting this end, there's um, really great work surface extender here so if you are cooking you've got that extra bit of space um, we've got also another three-point plug here which is actually really good if you want to use something outside um, there's another three-point plug here as well and one in the cupboard which is a surprise um, Underneath the cupboard as well as a um, kitchen strip light, which is great for cooking. We've got a two burner hob under there. So the light on right over the top, really good for cooking and a sink with hot and cold running water. It's got a nice splash back here as well to stop anything falling out the, out the van. Um, and then another one on that side to make cleaning up uh, nice and easy. So there's a gas oven um, and grill here. Um, it's very clean. I don't think we've used it much. Um, we keep our Ridge Monkey in here for traveling, um, along with some trays, the grill pan, and some instruction manuals, it seems. Um, so great storage space. So moving down here, we have the fridge. It's a three-way fridge. It can work off the electricity, gas, or the engine when it's running for when you're traveling. Um, above the fridge we've got a wardrobe, it's quite a decent wardrobe actually, there's uh, quite a lot that you can fit in there. Also um, there's a table leg in here for the table. No. Here's the bathroom, come in. There's not a great deal of room for two but let's squash in, see what we can see. Um, the toilet, I mean self-explanatory, you don't need, you don't need a tour of that. Um, there's a hook on here because it has got a shower as well so there's a curtain that will come all the way round while the shower's on. 
I'll just move over to this side. Um, as a shower, it's a squeeze. It's a squeezy shower. I don't know what the technical term for that is. You have to squeeze it to get the water to come out. Um, the sink here folds out, so you can run the water in the in there while you're brushing your teeth, washing your face, whatever, and then it just tips away. Folds up neat and nice big space. Um, you've got quite a few shelves here, which is um, good, especially when you're parked up. I mean, obviously don't put anything on there when you're traveling, but um, it's great when you're parked for towels and things like that. There's also a really big vanity unit. Um, so double mirrors, and then they open up to a collection of shelves. So lots of storage space. On the back of the door, we've got a couple of hooks, um, which is good if, it, if it's been a wet day and you've got uh, rainy coats. Um, it's nice to hang them in the bathroom. Um, it can be a bit of a pain if you need to go to the toilet, but at least it's somewhere to hang them to keep them out of the van. Put the heat in on for half an hour, dry them off, um, and then a towel rail. So welcome to the lounge area. Um, as you can see, it's a lovely big space, really comfortable and loads of room for lots of people to sit down. It does convert into the bed as well. Um, and as you can see from having the barn doors open, makes it feel like a lovely outdoor but indoor space. So it's got these really great strip lights here on each side and four spotlights. there so it's nice for reading or if you are in bed great reading light all of the windows on the van open um, and they've all got these blinds and fly screens so it's really neat no messy curtains or anything you can just close the blinds up or down with the fly screen or without the fly screen however you prefer and they're on every single window um, which is a really great feature Overhead you've got six lockers, really spacious lockers like the two in the front, loads of room in them. The only one that's got something in it is this one which has got the TV stuff in there which Ian will talk about later. Um, we've got a carbon monoxide and smoke detector, great safety features. So under these two big seats, uh, this side is totally storage so it's a huge big space loads of room in there um, there's an access hatch there um, we normally keep our chocks and things in there so really easy to get to um, on this side it's all of the control panels the truma heating stuff there's a box up there for it as well i miss that um, and again another access panel um, to get into it there so just to quickly demonstrate how easy the bed is um, no faffing around at bedtime here Literally each side pulls out, you move the cushion over, push that one down, same on that side, bed done, easy. So the final thing to tell you about here is the two vents at the bottom here for the blown air heating and another three point plug down here. There is also a USB charging point on this side as well. Uh, here we've got a nice ledge which acts as a great drinks holder when you're lounging in this area and then we've got the plug point in the floor for the table. So table leg is found in the wardrobe and the table itself is in this rather neat little cupboard. So it's nice and easy out of the way. You can literally just slide it out here and use it. So here we have the table uh, just to demonstrate that it's the same grey colour and texture as the table in the dinette and the surfaces in the kitchen. Really nice finish, hard wearing, really easy to clean and wipe down. Um, nice feature, it's not, it's actually a really good size here for eating on, it's not too big, um, it's not too small, a really quite manoeuvrable, easy to get in and out the cupboard. So yeah, great, uh, great feature. A uh, final thing to mention before we go upstairs is um, the TV. TV comes as standard, um, it's also a DVD player as well uh, we've got a USB stick in there so we can record as well so we don't miss anything vital. Also I did forget there is a TV aerial on the roof and the aerial booster panel is found in this middle cupboard so it gives a really good signal and obviously with the extra boost means that you don't you, well you can get all of your channels. <laughs> So going up to the pop top, to the upstairs of our van, um, the ladder is found here in the storage area um, and to release the pop top we just unclip the piece of material here, 
which keeps it all looking nice, neat and tidy. So the clips holding the roof in, there's one on each side. Um, it's just a safety catch to release here and then this to twist to release the catch off there. So one on each side. Then with the handles, just give it a shove and it extends. Easy. So up here we've got a um, full size double bed, really comfy mattress and the uh, sprung mattress underneath um, which we'll show. Um, it's really light up here. We've got a window on that side, um, one on that side with the fly screen um, and then one behind which um, actually zips right open so you can have it just totally open if you wanted to. I mean great to lie in bed, look out at the sunset or the sunrise. Um, these zip round nicely to close up. We've got these lights as well here, really nice reading lights, which just clip on and off, lighter um, or brighter. Then they've also got USBs on as well, so great if you need to charge your phone while you're in bed. And then we've got this, which is a really nice feature, like a safety net to put over, just to stop you falling out. Um, actually, probably people aren't so likely to fall out, but maybe pillows so it is good to catch anything that might disappear in the night. I think it might be a safety net for children, not pillows. And finally but there is uh, the top vent which uh, just allows airflow through so it does keep it nice and cool in the summer or nice and warm in the winter so yeah I think I might stay here for a bit. Okay, so the technical spec on the van, we'll start with going through the sizes and dimensions of it first. So the van is, this is a 65, so this is 6.36 metres long. The 55, which is the shorter version, is 5.99 metres long. They're both four bed, both the same width, 2.27 metres. Um, what else can I find on it to explain? So it's a 140 brake diesel engine, a standard. Uh, they also do now 160 and 180 option as well, and you can have an automatic gearbox too. This is a 2000 model year, and this was available with 120 brake, but they changed that engine at the start of this 2021 season, so the minimum engine now is a 140, which is the same as this one. Six-speed manual is standard, um, and that is also available in automatic, as I said. Maximum weight is 3,500 kilograms, and the overall height of the van is 2.75 metres. Um, couple of other things as well. The freshwater tank capacity is 70 litres and the wastewater capacity is 70 litres as well and the fuel tank is 75. And that's pretty much it for the dimensions of the van. Anything you want to add? No, I'm glad you're reading it off there. I was <laughs> a bit worried if I thought you were, had all that just locked away in there. I did, but I'm just double checking it. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Honestly. Likely story. Honestly. Okay, so talking about some of the main features on the van that we've, we've shown you through, during the video. So the, the boiler on this van is a Truma heating system that heats the water and obviously the central heating. Again, that has changed on the 2021 model year, but I'm going to do a separate section on what the changes are. It's a really good system. It, you control it from the panel above the door. You can also control it from the app as well, um, which is really useful if you're obviously wanting to turn the heating on while you're in bed. You can set a timer on it. It's really, really useful. Yeah, system, that, that is a good that is a good feature. We do like that being able to switch the heating on from from bed without getting out. Yeah, without yeah. arguing who goes and does it. So, and also also with Truma, you've got um, sat in the back of the cupboard. It's got a a, a unit for GSM and from a SIM card that you can have in the van. You can get we got one from Asda Mobile, which cost five pounds. Uh, oh, the, sorry, the SIM was free, but the credit was five pounds, and it's lasted us six months already. And you can actually send the van a uh, text and it'll turn the heating on for you. So if you're out, say for example, you're up a mountain, you walk in and the van's at part in a campsite, you can actually text the van to the Truma heating and it'll turn the heating on for you and the water. So when you get back, if you want to have a shower or if you want to just to get into a nice cozy warm van, yeah, that's it's brilliant. Good. The only slight downside was I was at a site in the Lake District in October at Scaffell Pike and I was up mountain, it was very wet and windy. 
I texted the van and there was no phone signal in the campsite, so it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, so great. But like all things with technology, brilliant when it's working, but yeah, not so yeah. great, obviously, in that situation. So, but unfortunately, I was able to do it from outside the van using Bluetooth and I was sat, stood outside taking my boots and wet stuff off and the van was heating up nicely for me, which is really cool. So actually, when I got inside, it was nice and warm. Yeah, yeah, it's a great feature. Something else that I really like on this van and on auto trails is my auto trail portal. So it's not an app, but it's a web link and you can go onto the website and you can basically communicate with your van. Sorry, that's the dog trying, well, to, uh, <laughs> trying to find somewhere to, to comfort itself behind the chair. So on the app, yeah, on the website portal, you can actually go in and you can, again, you can see the van, you can see the status of it. So you can connect to it remotely. You can turn the power on to the van. You can also turn the lights on as well. So if you're out and you're going back to the van late at night, you can turn the outside awning light on or the inside light on as well. It's a really, really useful feature. You just love that. You just, it literally sits in the house upstairs, checking on the van, <laughs> checking it's still there. Look out the window. Um, yeah, is it, the, you get a text message, don't you? How does that, when it's getting, yeah. when it's cold or if there's a frost alert, how does that work? Yeah, so if you've got water in your tanks and the temperature drops below a certain temperature, which again, you can set within the, the portal right. on the, on the uh, with it on the website, you can go in and set the alerts and it'll then send you a text or an email if the water, if the temperature drops below a certain temperature. So obviously, so you can empty your water tanks, doesn't freeze, frost, it's basically called a frost alert. But also you can see where the van is on a map, it tracks and updates itself. So if you've left the van somewhere, you can, if you go out for the day, like we walked in Devon, we walked, I don't know, we walked seven or eight miles and we're having lunch somewhere. And I just watched, check the van was still at the campsite. You can just log onto the, <laughs> onto the, uh, onto the website and do it. <laughs> it's not an app. Uh, some of the other manufacturers like Swift, for example, they have an app, which is obviously you can do on your phone, but I've just got the web link saved to my phone. So I open it up, it goes straight into it, password details. Is there an app? No, not for Elsa Trail, there is for Swift, oh, okay. but not for Auto Trail. But it's a website which is effectively very similar. So yeah. but you can do all sorts of you can download the history of the van too. So in terms of the upholstery, one of the things that really attracted us to the van as well was this seats. We thought they were fantastic, really modern, very much car like. They've got like half leather, half cloth, nicely embossed with Auto Trail logo on them as well. Um, same throughout the whole the whole van. And the other things, really important things for us for the bed. Um, Obviously, with the bed, I'll just write the dimensions of them for you so you can see them. So, sorry, I'm getting pestered by a border collie who wants to go out for another walk. Um, the rear bed downstairs is 1.86 meters by 1.63 wide. So I am 1.85 meters, which is exactly why I wanted the, the Cato or the Peugeot or the Citroen base van, because they're wider at the back. So when you sleep transversely, that can, means I can sleep fully across the van. And it's got a really nice big double bed. Uh, on the other vans, like for example the Mercedes or the Volkswagen, they're slightly narrower. So you see some of those have got the pop-out side panels for people who are taller for sleeping. But that's one of the reasons why I wanted it, wasn't it? Yeah, so yeah, it's fine for me. But yeah, you can stretch out and actually sleep properly, can't you? Just, yeah, it literally is. <laughs> I'm 1.85, it's 1.86. So I, sometimes I sleep ever so slightly slightly an angle. But because it's so wide, it's, it's comfortable, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, there's plenty, there's plenty of space. Yeah, and the upstairs bed is really, really big. This is two metres. Uh, length so plenty of room lengthwise by 1.3 so it's almost the same size as a full well it is in fact it's full four foot three that's the same size as a double bed at home normal this normal double bed yeah but it's really comfy and massive isn't it yeah yeah so you've got full two size double beds something else in the van that's really good is the number of sort of features and te technical features it's got on it so it's got four three pin plugs which is as the most I've seen on a van, I think any van at all. And they're all spread out throughout the van. So there's one right by the door, there's one at the back, there's two in the middle by the kitchen. It's also got six USBs in the habitation area just alone. That's not including the Ducato bit at the front. So you've got uh, two in the front dinette, you've got two in the rear dinette, and then you've got two in the pop top built into the lights. So six USBs, plenty of use for charging, you know, tablets, phones, cameras, etc. when you're out yeah. filming. Yeah, it's, it's good to have them and have them all spread out, isn't it? You charge your iWatch as well, don't you? Yeah, yeah, the Apple Watch yeah, on its yeah. charger, yeah. Which so, is you well anything. Quite it? a big power drain, but there's there's two different settings on the USBs in the habitation areas. One is 2.1, I think the other one is 1. So they're good, good power output from them too. So in terms of entertainment, it's got a number of different devices. It's got the, the sat-nav sat unit built in. You can also use got radio and it comes with remote control. So if you sat in the front of that, you can have the radio on. It's actually powered from the leisure battery, so it gives you uh, obviously the ability to have it on when you're plugged into the mains or through the leisure system. And in the back of the van, there's a 12 volt uh, and 230 volt TV. Avtex with built-in DVD player. Really cool. Sorry about the dog. How <laughs> are you boring it? <laughs> <laughs> it's also got, at the top of it, it's got a USB slot, so you can have a 
plug in a USB stick and you, re you can record onto it as well. So if you're out and you want to record your favorite program, you can do that too. Um, really, really good. We didn't think we'd watch much telly in it, but we've had a couple of rainy days. It's nice to come back and it's yeah. cold. I think it's just nice in the evening as well. Yeah. You know, if you're, if you're away and it's not sitting out weather, it is nice to sit in and breed or, you know, yeah. I have the option to watch the TV and the DVDs. Yeah, with the HDMI socket on it as well, it means you can plug in an, an external source if you want to put an Amazon Fire Stick or you want to put in a, a games console or anything like that, you can do. So yeah, it's, Some uh, things just can't be left at home, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> it's uh, plenty of tech on it as well, which is really, really interesting for us, or for me particularly. In one of the cupboards, you've got the control unit for the aerial booster, which is on the roof. The aerial's on the roof. This is the booster panel. So you can turn that on or off, and that boosts your signal as well to give you extra power for your aerial. The Adventure comes with a solar panel as standard on the roof, a 100 watt solar panel and a 75 amp battery and you can also then have a selector in this cupboard you can change between charging the vehicle battery or the leisure battery which I think is a really cool feature it means you can keep your van ready to go at all times. So in one of the rear cupboards you've got the control panel for the Truma iNet box and this is where you insert a SIM card and that will allow you to control the heating and the hot water remotely from the van by sending the van a text message. And that sits in the back. That's a really cool feature. So in terms of security, the van comes as standard with the normal built-in Fiat mobiliser. It's got a red flashing light on the dash that tells you that it's immobilised. Um, but also it comes part of the Auto Trail package. It comes with a tracker. That's an optional extra, which you can subscribe to online. Very easy to do. And that lets you obviously, if the vehicle, if the van's stolen for any reason, obviously, hopefully never, but you can activate the tracker and obviously the van can be recovered. And that's the Thatcham approved tracker as well. And that's built into the van as standard. Um, the central locking works off the key, works off the buttons inside as well, so you can lock the van, it's nice and secure. And you know if the red light's flashing, you know all the doors are locked. And the good thing is you've got separate controls for the front two cab doors, and you've also got then controls for the rear doors as well, the barn doors and the side door too. So just the final point really is to touch on is the warranty on the van as standard. So the Fiat bit at the front, the engine bit comes with a two year warranty as standard, and the auto trail bit comes with a five year warranty as standard. You can extend the Fiat bit to five years and you can extend the auto trail bit to ten years. You have to make sure you have your habitation checks done every year, uh, which is another reason why we went to go for this model. So it's really good long warranty on it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Gives us reassurance. When you're spending lots of money, you want to make sure you're obviously getting getting a decent warranty. Um, so that, yeah, pretty much it, I think. Uh, there's nothing else really to talk about, apart from some of the main reasons why we bought it, which we'll do in a second. We'll go through some of the, the highlights of the reasons why we actually chose this van. Um, but yeah, that's yeah. the technical section. Well done, you. Thanks for your input. <laughs> yeah, clearly, yeah. Clearly I'm uh, all about the technical stuff, me, yeah. And the dogs, <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> so, the changes between the Model Year 20 and the Model Year 21. This van, our van is a Model Year 20. It was the first year that Ultra Trail launched the Adventure model. The Model Year 21, they've made a few changes. Not too many, but a couple. The main one being the removal of the overhead storage area above the cab. Um, how many times have we banged our head on that? Yeah, quite a few, actually. I mean, I do like the storage uh, facility. Obviously, we've got the ladder up there, coats, pillows, blankets, but basically anything. It's great to just stuff up things up there out yeah, of the way. Yeah, coats is perfect. Come outdoors, put your coat in there. As long as it's not wet, obviously, you can put it above. Um, but I've banged my head a few times, and I couldn't figure out where they're going to store the ladder, but we've still on the Modio 21. It's actually stored in the roof hatch area, which is really clever. So I can see why they've removed that. On some of the models, without the Adventure roof popped up on, they've also built in a sunroof to them, so you have that option with Auto Trail. That's not something you can get on the Adventure, but I've seen Adria have just done it on their van, mm. um, on the pop top, and they've put a sunroof on, so I think Auto Trail might do that in the future. Some of the points, they've changed the heating system. So the heating system on our van is a Truma system, um, and it's mounted in the, under one of the rear lockers. On the new van, on the Model 21, it's a whale system and it's underslung, so it gives you a little bit more room in the rear locker. I don't know how the whale system works, I've not, I've not had a chance to play with that yet, um, so I don't know if there's any differences, but that's the only real difference we can see is, is a storage area. And a couple of other options as well, the TV has changed in size from a 19 to 21 inch. Um, and I'm not sure if they've changed the head unit on the, on the nav, I'm not 100% sure on that, it doesn't say anywhere if they've changed the head unit. Um, and a couple of other options are available on the Model Year 21, so the colour range is the same, but They've added in a bike rack on the back. You can have a bike rack as a factory option. And also the other option is Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi for your motorhome built in. They're cost options. Um, and the only real change, as I mentioned earlier, is the engine is now 140 a standard, not 120 brake. And three engine choices, 140, 160, 180 with auto. And that's it really on the Model 21. Great stuff. 
Okay, so the reason we chose the van. Why did we choose the van? Well, many reasons. Many reasons, <laughs> many reasons. Mainly, the most important reason really is value for money. What you get on the adventure from Auto Trail is standard. The van on the road price is 57,915 on the road, pretty much as you see it. Our van has got the upgraded engine, but that now is standard. Um, obviously the paint you can choose optional extra and a few other bits and pieces, but 57,915. And for that, you get everything included in the van as standard. So you've got obviously the, the awning on the side, you've got the alloys, you've got the air conditioning. It's got pretty much everything we wanted as an option built in yeah, into the van as standard. It ticks all the boxes if you've seen our previous video with the list of um, things that we that we needed um, or wanted, uh, yeah, it ticked ticked everything. Yeah, it? and the style, the design, the shape. We wanted something that looked a bit sporty, which is why we wanted a van. And I think this van looks particularly nice from the outside as well as it does on the inside. Modern finishes, really nice clean lines inside. Everything fits really well. Um, so in terms of that, and obviously the, the ability with the pop top was what we really wanted, wasn't it? Yeah. The pop top to give us more space. The rear lounge, which was critical for us. We wanted a rear lounge and the front dinette is a lovely option and to have a built-in bathroom. Yes, <laughs> bathroom, absolutely. That was that was the key for me. I just didn't want to be getting up in the middle of the night, traipsing across a field to go to the bathroom. That was a real so, thing that made us choose this van yeah. over anything else. And, yes, and that's one of the things we've really enjoyed with it. The other reason as well we went for the Ducato was because, well, for this van was because of the Ducato. Um, there's a reason that so many motorhomes across Europe are built on Fiat. Um, it's obviously a reliable motorhome. There's plenty of service points. Pretty much anywhere you go across Europe, even if you go to America, the Ram Promaster, you, you've got so many different options of getting the vehicle serviced and repaired if you have any issues. The other thing that was critical, like I said earlier in the video, is the width at the back, that for the bed, for the transverse bed. For me being tall, that's exactly why I wanted it. So either a Peugeot, Citroen or a Fiat, which are all built on the same, the same chassis, they would have been ideal vans for us. Um, which is why I went for this one. So in terms of that, in terms of those functions and features, the, the Auto Trail Adventure ticks every single box for us. Yeah, and um, it's light. Yeah. It's light and airy. We saw some vans that didn't have any windows in the back and the back was quite dark. Um, oh, they were optional extras. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's uh, yeah, just nice and light and airy. The finish is, is neutral, so it's it feels quite... Um, I don't know what the word is, like just like kind of calming, yes, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's good, yeah, good description, it's very calming. So yeah, that's, that's the reasons why we bought it. So, the all-important rating. Um, now, clearly this is our van van, we've bought it with our own money, <laughs> we're not being paid to say this, this is our own experience. We've lived with the van for nearly a year, so hopefully you've seen that from the review, you can see the, the, the genuine feedback we've had on the van. Um, we've literally had no issues with it whatsoever, touch wood. It's been absolutely fantastic. We had one of the rear blinds on the barn door came loose. That, that was repaired under warranty um, about when it was about six months old, but that is literally it. It's been brilliant. I know people have problems with vans, no matter um, what yeah. model you buy. You I know. can't think anything that we don't like about it. But there's a couple. We'll probably do a separate video on our top five yeah. peeves and, and, and loves. But I, there's there's very little. I mean, that's that's the beauty. We've lived with it for nearly a yeah. year, and we've, we've we still love it every minute of it. Um, so down to the rating. I think you can guess what this one's oh, going to no be. Surprise! Yeah. <laughs> but, one. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. But yeah, what rating should we give the van? What do you think? What do you think we should give the van? Should we give the van five? Yeah, we we'll give the van five. That's ten. That's ten sorry, yeah, we we'll give it ten. Five. <laughs> Thanks very much. Yeah. So High five from Molly. We all give it. We all give it five. Yeah, we all give the van five. Someone loves the van very much too, just like us. This is one of the reasons we wanted the van to, to be able to bring her with us. So, yeah, it's been. A, she's facing the wrong way. She should probably see. Uh, so for us, complete five star rating. Fantastic vehicle. Exactly yeah. what we wanted. Great job, Auto Trail. Yeah, couldn't ask for any more.
destiny I'll take the long way proud Oh, I know what I've earned And now it's my turn Lighting the fuse, let it burn But my time is rising And you can't bring me down Can't stop You can't stop me now